So uh, my name is Jason Chen. Uh, I flew down from San Francisco to, um, to uh, you know, do more, get my Drupal stuff on because I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it to Paris. Is, um, I'm going to be out in the desert um, enjoying, uh, you know, another community. Um, but uh, so I'm, I'm happy to hang out with the Drupal, with the LA crew and see what's going on down here. And uh, today I'll be presenting. Um, how to uh, set up you use the WYSIWYG API and TinyMCE and um, do inline images uh, without using the um, IMCE stuff. Um, you know, that's pretty much how I used to do it, but the new way is, um, well, this is the new way, and I just learned it, and uh, it's pretty cool, so I hope you're stoked. All right, so first thing we're going to begin with is we're going to install Drupal. Okay. And I'm going to install Drupal in English language. Uh, okay. I do an email address. WYSIWYG.com. Excuse me. It's WYSIWYG. 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 All right. So we just installed Drupal. Uh, we, the first thing we're going to do is go to uh, Administer, and then go into Modules, and let's load up what we're going to use today. So, um, Administration Menu um, is a very useful utility to uh, tool around and uh, navigate, you know, navigate your site or admin it. The Content Construction Kit, or Content, we're also going to use the Field Group, File Field, and File Field Insert. And file field sources, the image field. Uh, we will also turn on the image API. And ideally, you'd want to use image magic, um, but you know, I'm running this locally and I don't have that library installed, so I'll just use the GD library for now. And we also use image cache. Um, we're also going to use this uh, better formats. This guy. Um, it's pretty cool because it's a nice way to um, enable your users or, n or disable them from getting access to um, the HTML or WYSIWYG interface. You know, what's cool about this is you, you, you know, you're going to enable your users to do better formatting. The disadvantage is you don't want to let anonymous users upload pictures or you know, write you know, malicious code through this interface. And, you know, WYSIWYG and a lot of the HTML things kind of have a kind of a bad rap because they do sort of enable some users to make a mess of your creative stuff or your design. But if you restrict um, how it's used, um, it could be quite useful. Um, the last thing we're going to put in is the WYSIWYG API. Okay, so we hit save, loads the modules. Okay, let's see. So let's see what do we have next in the script. Okay, so um, haven't really done much yet, as you can see. So let's also set this up so that we can sort of have a a, a role of editor. Um, um, you know, we, we're going to basically use this as a way to manage permissions for that group. So let's go to user permissions now, and we're going to check a couple things here. Um, I'm going to let temporarily um, anonymous users access and post comments without approval. And then we're going to slip down here to editors are going to be able to create page content and also edit any page content for now. And that's it. Okay. Next, let's make a user. And we're going to add a user now. So let's call them editor. Editor. Let's go editor at wzbake.com. And set the password. OK. So now uh, we're, we're going to basic. So user one is going to be running through this browser. And I'm going to use uh, Firefox to uh, pretend I'm the editor user. All right. So now let's go see what we get without using these modules yet. So if I log in, 
type in editor. editor. Oops. Editor. Editor. Okay. So now I'm logged in as this user here, whereas I'm user one over here. Okay. So as editor, I'm going to now create content. I'm going to make a page. And this is pretty much business as usual. This is like what we always see, okay? So we'll just call this, you know, well, you know what this is, right? It's, it's, this is basically what, you know, we get, you know, normally without using an HTML <coughs> interface or WYSIWYG thing, okay? So next, what we're going to do is let's turn on TinyMCE you now. So if I go here, this is what comes out of the um, WYSIWYG API. And notice that part of this is, you, yes, you do install this module, but then there's, you have to take an extra step. Um, the, these JavaScript libraries are not, this isn't Drupal, this is something else. These are all external things which are licensed by their own different you know, domains and whatnot. So, this is an example where you do have to go out and get something external to, you know, uh, for, you know that's not that's not hosted on Drupal. And in addition, um, it tells you where to put it. And today, I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this one, TinyMCE. And so there's a link right here to the website, and this is all you need right here. Okay, I've already downloaded it, and this. This explains it needs to live here, okay? So I'm going to make a, a, a folder called uh, libraries inside of all. So let's make sure I'm in the right folder. So I am. Let's make a new folder called, li called libraries. And inside of libraries, I'm going to put the TinyMCE package. I'm going to expand it. And you see here, this, this is pretty much what this is asking for is so that the actual library can be found here. So it says sites so all, you know, yada, yada, yada. So you don't use the uh, TinyMCE module anymore? That's correct. You no longer use the TinyMCE module. That has been replaced along with other modules like that with the WYSIWYG API. The WYSIWYG API is pretty much the sort of master controller of all these libraries. And that's pretty much how, how it's done now, which is, I think, pretty cool. So here we go. So now, now that we put those things in place, if you reload, this now looks like this. See the difference? And I just reloaded this. And if we wanted to like add other ones, other stuff's down here still, but you know, we're kind of not needing that anymore. The next thing we're gonna do is rather than just messing with these and loading these things up, why don't we make a new input format? So we go to um, Site Configuration, Input Formats, and we're going to add Input Format. Okay, and let's call this guy WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And the role that we're going to allow to use this is Editor and not these guys. Okay, we don't want anonymous users having access to this stuff. It's just not, not safe, not cool. In addition, I'm going to check the image resize filter now. Um, that's part of the inline image stuff we're going to show you a little bit later. Okay. Then I hit save. And now this adds this as a third filter in the list. Okay. So if I take a look here, you can now see that there's this guy right here. I'm not totally straight, so thanks. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So uh, that would allow you then to have an authenticated user use the standard editor, and if they are quote unquote editor, then they'll have access to this other. That's correct. I'm going to show you how that's managed now. So um, a couple things. Um, so yeah. So while we're here, the other module that helps this whole mix is um, this guy right here. Let me pull it open for a sec. List is the Better formats, okay. Um, and what it gives you is um, this tab right here. That's not part of core. That's what this module is putting in. So what's cool about this is, and notice this says no roles can use this. 
you go to defaults, you can then select this per role that they have access to this. Okay. Then the next thing that you have to remember is you have to move it up so that this will fire off before this one. If you don't, it's not going to work. Well, it's not going to work. It'll work. It just won't look as slick and that kind of stuff. You have to. You have. There's a, a additional click required. So be sure you remember to move this guy up. All right. Then you hit save. Okay. Next thing you need to do is let's go back to um, to that input format called WYSIWYG, and we're going to hit configure. And part of what you need to do is you need to add the allowed tags that can slip through this filter. So I'm going to add things like H1 down the line, H2, H3, H4, H5, uh, P, and image. Okay, it looks good. And let's hit, and then something else stating here, under this option here, um, go ahead, if we click this, that's going to kick off some kind of cool, you know, that's where we can do some light box stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and check it now because I'm on this page. I hit save settings. And that's what we got. Do you so, have to use the HTML filter? Uh, um, this, um, I, I, this is the workflow I always do. I, I okay. would imagine you could potentially try other things, but this is the my, my standard operating procedure of how I do it. Uh, so, uh, Do you mean you don't want HTML filter at all, or you just want a different approach? Well, I've, I've used Tiny MC in the past with just basically full HTML. Oh. Um, the, there's oh. security issues. If yeah. You, if you do. yeah, that's by putting this in a bucket. It, so again, the question is, um, do we have to use the HTML filter, and, and by setting up this whole other input format, we can sort of manage um, settings and securities a bit better. Do you have another question? Yeah. I, I've actually worked a lot with these groups that people that are uh, HTML filter and found it really, really limited. Yeah. Um, I think you can do a lot more with it. I, I will actually, after yeah, so we'll, I guess we'll do, done, we'll I, do, I'm going to talk about yeah. a different filter that you can yeah. replace the default HTML filter. So, okay, so moving forward, and, but we'll totally cover that question or answer that after this basic setup is covered. All right, so we hit save, and let's see what we get now. So come back over here. So now, okay, so remember, I'm user one here, and now I'm editor. I'm using a different browser, different session, whole whole bit. And so um, let's go back to uh, create content, node ed. Oh, come on, dude. If I go to page, okay, why isn't this working? What did I forget to do? <laughs> uh, let's see. Let me just make sure I didn't forget something. Okay, that guy is cool. Yeah, I am. Um, okay. Is the Tony MC profile set up? Um. Okay, let's go back to info formats list. Okay, that guy's like that. If I go to defaults, that's it to that. Oh, okay. I forgot to do something else. Um, forgot the good stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So the reason why I didn't do anything is it didn't. I didn't tell it to do anything yet. So now, you <coughs> you select this. This is what the show is all about. <laughs> I did all my uh, setup in another way first, and now now now's the fun stuff. Okay. So now let's hit save. And now, so again, what we just did here is we went back to this guy under profiles, and now we're you know now we're gonna actually let Tiny do its stuff. All right, so now if we go basic setup, it's enabled by default. Um, uh, I'm not gonna let them choose. Um, under buttons and plugins, I like to be quite selective about what I use. I don't want you know my users junking up the design, so I, I try to be kind of careful about what I put in. So, but I'll let them use bold. I'll let them use italic because they'll ask for it anyways. Um, we also want to give them the ability to make lists. Um, I also like using link so they can put in their links rather than just having URLs and unlink. Um, I'm not going to do this one 
image that is. I'm going to show you a cooler, new, better, improved way. Uh, no, I mean, I think less is better, you know, just keep it simple. Um, I mean, I just don't, hopefully they're just not going to make a mess, you know, I mean, I don't know, you could put it in if you want, I don't like that one. But I'm a dork, so I'm going to put in source code, you know, I always like to take a peek. Um, this guy is pretty sweet, character map, if you well, I'll show you what that does in a sec. Um, next, let's see, this, okay, this guy right here is what enables you enables your users to select heading one, heading two, etc., p, all that kind of stuff. This guy um, is another important one, and that's font style. Okay, and that's where that's where we can actually slip in CSS, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, what else am I forgetting? Full screen's kind of cool, um, and then you could put this in. I, I don't know. I'm not going to put it in for now. Another very, very useful thing is this. Um, <clears throat> when you, um, Word will generate um, a really dirty clipboard. <coughs> Jesus, does it even have any water? <coughs> Thanks. <laughs> <clears throat> oh god, thank you. All right, sorry about that. <clears throat> um, so paste from Word. Uh, what, why that's useful is when you copy content out of a Microsoft product, it puts all this extra junk in the clipboard. <clears throat> and unfortunately, that junk's going to slip through. And so if users really must do that, Tell them you need to put put it through that. Um, it's just it's very useful. Um, all right, so moving forward, <clears throat> um, editor appearance. You can tell the toolbar to you know be top or bottom, change the alignment to the buttons. Uh, this guy is very important, and I'll show you uh, shortly. And um, the other thing I'm going to show you is this is the inputs that it's allowing to come through. And there's one more little bit I'm going to do on this, this screen here, okay? And that is where I'm going to put in my own CSS because part of this demo is showing you how to align images with CSS so you float them left or float them right. But out of the box, it doesn't do that. You do need to do that. So inside of, in, I'm using Garland temporarily. So inside of the garland.info file, inside of the themes folder, does this make sense where this resides to everyone? Okay. In here, I put in this one little line that is calling this CSS file, which is the, um, stored in here. Uh, where we go? Oops. Okay, well, I don't know where it is, but anyways. Um, I can find it like this. So WYSIWYG. <clears throat> themes. Garland. And, you know, you really should be messing around in here. This is just, you know, I'm just doing this for demonstration sake. You should actually have your own theme set up and... You really shouldn't be messing with this because it's sort of there for a reason. But I did, so whatever. Uh, but anyways, there's this file here. And inside of here is a little bit of CSS, two lines or two classes. One's called image-right and the other one's called image-left. And all it does is, a you know, if it's a float right, and then I stick some padding on <clears throat> the left, left side and the bottom, and it's a float left, so I put some padding on the right side and the bottom. Okay? So... Notice it's called image dash right. So coming back to our configuration, this is where we enable uh, Tiny MCE to actually access these these uh, these 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 styles. And it's not really accessing; it's sort of enabling a, a pointer at them, if you will. So it says here to uh, just type them in like this, without the brackets, of course. So. Um, I'm going to call this guy uh, image right, and it says equals image dash right, which is the name of the class file there. See that? Okay. And this guy will be image left equals image dash left. All right, cool. All right, so from the top, we just, you know, <clears throat> Open the uh, profile for this for the tiny MC profile for WYSIWYG, and 
checked a few buttons and uh, added some CSS, you know, links there and hit save. Oh, go ahead. Okay, the question was that doesn't look like normal CSS code. And the reason why is because you don't actually put your CSS in here. You just put pointers to the class files. Why don't I do this? Here, let me show you this. This is an example of how what this you're doing works. is you're providing the values Equals. that go into that drop down box drop in the WYSIWYG box. editor. Um, and okay. so all you're doing is you're saying these are the these and are the things in the drop down, and then the Bob. CSS file takes care of actually. What? Display. Right. None. Um, it just applies it to whatever element that you have selected in the in the editor. What are we gonna make Bob do? <laughs> oh, Bob. Um, well, we'll just say well, Bob will hide stuff. All right. So, anyways, okay. So I just added another class file here called Bob or dot Bob, and then if I look here, I'm going to reach in to access Bob by adding it to this example of how this works. Bob. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so from the top, and yeah, sorry, I kind of jammed through stuff. If we go to, uh, um, if we go to admin, inside of it, uh oh, um, okay, <laughs> it's under uh, WYSIWYG, okay, under the WYSIWYG API under site config. Okay, which is, um, I don't know why I'm missing my admin page. Um, and then you go to WYSIWYG, which manages all the, um, which is where you, it's the, how you manage all the uh, uh, libraries. <clears throat> you click edit. And that's, that's the profile for this, this setting right here, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So the question is, how do you get here? Yeah, okay. All right, so let's see what we got. Um, so if I reload this, I should see it. There it is. <laughs> okay, cool. So now, look what we get. We get TinyMC, which I think is kind of neat. So let's call this, this is the example. And uh, let's go get some text. Copy. I'm going to paste this in. Now, <clears throat> so I just put in like, you know, three paragraphs. Now. Here's a little thing to take note about, okay? If I if I put in um, if I click on this path thing, you notice that it's saying this block item known as P is all this stuff. That's that's kind of a problem because it's you don't want that. So to clean that up, just go like this, hit the you know backspace and return, and that's gonna clean that up for you. See that? So now if I look at this, it's now a, a true paragraph. Etc. Okay, and um, why don't we also put in this, and we can now select a style of like let's say heading two or something or whatever. You know, let's make this guy, you know, heading three or something. Yeah, let's go ahead and four. If we wanted to do a bolted list, um, that's pretty easy to do now. So I could just go like. Uh, this, return, click this guy, and then every time I hit return now, I get another list item. So you can see how this, you know, this is pretty clean, you know, and it's, it's easy. It's uh, not, not hard at all to set up. Okay. Yep. Now, when you went back and you looked at the path and it took the entire thing as a paragraph, mm -hmm. Um, well, maybe if we put a spell checker in, we could get users more comfortable just to like <laughs> write in the interface. Um, and then there's the whole problem of, uh, um, you know, the dirty clipboard from Word, you know. 
Right. And so I, I think there's a way possibly of filtering out line breaks. I don't know. I don't, unfortunately, have a very good answer. Okay. But the real kicker on this demonstration is the image stuff is what we're about to get to. So, all right, but let's just hit save for now and check it out. Format HTML, okay? And the, the thing that's kind of nice about it is it, uh, it's fairly clean, you know? I mean, check it out. It's, you know, you got a P, um, H2. You know, there's, there's not a lot of junk in here, which is, you know, how you want it, right? So, you know, it's, it's pretty nice. Okay? All right, so now... Here comes the good stuff. Okay, so if I click edit on here, um, there's no there's no images, right? See, there's nothing here. No images at all. So to do that, we're going to start doing some of the more cool stuff. So let's go to site building, image cache. Um, who has not used image cache yet? Okay, do you know what this stuff does? Image cache allows you to process graphics on your web server. So it does, you can run images through um, uh, these presets. So let's add a new preset, and we're going to call this guy inline vertical. Or vertic yeah, vertical, fine, sure. And what we're going to tell it to do for inline pictures, and what's the height on verticals again? Sorry. That's okay, that's a good school. Okay, inline images, let's do vertical at 200 wide. So I'm going to tell vertical images to be 200 pixels wide, no height. And I don't want to upscale, by the way. And to note, just so I know it's working, um, you'll see a little Drupal icon get you know resized. Let's also add a uh, sharpen effect, just so that you know give it a little little punch, you know. Okay, see it's a little sharper. All right, and then let's so. That guy's done. Now let's go add one more. And let's call this guy um, inline. Actually, what do they call him? Well, let's call him make some up. Inline horizontal. <coughs> okay, let's add a scale. And for horizontal images, we're not going to put a value in here. <coughs> and for the height, uh, let's check out like 180 pixels tall. And um, and by the way, if you guys are doing this and it seems to be acting screwy, um, and I, because I only did one value, notice I clicked on this one and um, not uh, that one or that one or something. You know, use use this one. Let's also add that sharpen. <clears throat> okay. Um. I don't know. I've been doing it like this. <laughs> what, was, what was the question there? What's the advantage? Um, Using scale instead of what? Yeah, I mean, it's part of it's. Um, I just put in one value and. Yeah, resize can distort the image. Yeah. It'll actually just take whatever the image is and resize it to the exact pixel dimensions you give it. Um, yeah. The only reason deprecated scale is still in there is because if you want to scale and crop and then crop it there's some extra things that you can do in the deprecated scale um, you can tell it resize so that the minimum dimensions are 100 or, or something like that so it's nice for doing like square croppings yep okay so um, next um, Oh, you're, oh so, okay, so the question is, the, the, the question is, what happened to the drop? I had it, and then I went away. But what happened, what's going on is um, your configuration is not able to either write the uh, directory that the, that the files are to be processed into, or it can't find the temp directory where they're supposed to be written to, or your um, image uh, API is screwed up, or your, your, your graphic setup is, is screwy. Um, and that's a whole, that's a whole other mess. And, um, and unfortunately, you just have to learn to. You just need to get to know your server or your your computer for that for, the, for me to best answer. That. Or look at your logs, you know. Yeah, check or look at your PHP log as well. Okay, so all right, so all right, so thank you for waiting. Okay, so now we're in content types. Okay, and now we're gonna add the ability to allow inline images without using IMC, okay? 
So we're going to go to Manage Fields, and we're going to add the field, and let's call this inline, uh, inline image, just a label. Our image is, because we're going to do plural, and go inline. Field type will be a file field, and we're going to um, use an image. Okay, and this is the content construction kit uh, image field. If we wanted to set the path, we could say within the files directory that these are in the inline folder. If I wanted to do a file size restriction, I could do that. For all text, um, um, yeah, why not enable so people could put in all text, and why not just for yucks, we'll let them put in, uh, you know, custom stuff for here for SEO. Now, here's the little bit that's not standard issue, and that's just HTML insert. You want to enable that, and you're also going to enable these two inline image, um, I mean these two image cache presets that we just made like two seconds ago. And I don't know if I have to put a value here. I'm going to see if I can get away with not doing that. And uh, and let's see, description field. I don't think we need that. Okay. So now let's hit save. And um, another important thing is, and this <laughs> next thing, because this is a standard CCK field, you, you don't want this showing up for this inline move we're about to do. So we're actually going to turn these guys off. So we're going to turn the visibility of that to be hidden, uh, hidden, and hidden. Okay. Um, these are the display options for that field. The question is, what does this just do? And, that, and the answer is, uh, the display fields um, is where you manage how things could appear. If I wanted to actually say on teasers or full nodes, if I wanted those to actually look like that, I can actually run the image th images through you know, my image cache settings as well. Okay, but we're, we're in this case for this exercise of using inline images, um, we don't want those to be hidden. Okay. All right, let's see what we get. So check this out. So now, if I reload, you don't really see anything else, right? Just, you know, nothing really new. If I click Edit, oh, wait, you know what? I forgot something. I forgot the cool part. Uh, under Manage Fields, uh, go back to Configure, and set this to uh, number of values, and we're going to go Unlimited, OK? I forgot that. All right. Okay, here it goes. So now if we click Edit, um, again, no no button up here, right? But let's put the cursor here. And this is where we're going to put the picture. Let's check this out. And we can upload, or we can reference uh, an existing um, file in the file system or a remote URL. Let's do a remote URL. So. I have a couple bookmarks here. So let's. So this is the Nate's the guy whose code we're using right now. So let's put him in first. All right. So go back over here, and let's stick him in here. Remote URL. Paste. So this is coming off Flickr. See, it transfer and it's going to put this into my files directory. Next, we're going to say image size. Uh, let's go, it's a horizontal image, and if we can go alt text goes here, and uh, this is a title. All right, and then we go send to text area, and check it out. All right, got some moves, good. <laughs> now, uh, check this out. Remember this guy? That should make it hide. <laughs> Remember Bob? <laughs> but let's just make him on the uh, left for now, okay? <laughs> All right, so, so now if we hit save, check it out. See? Isn't that neat? <laughs> Question? Where is the image being stored? Where is it being stored? It's in the files directory. When you uh, do the transfer, it actually downloads the file from the remote site. So it's actually put the file on the server. Yeah. Okay, now, what about the problem of you know, two different users overriding files and then the file the same name or 
Well, in this case, um, when you reference a remote URL, it's putting in this crazy long title here. This I, just well, no, it, it, it creates a unique name, an MD5 hash of the of the URL and some yeah. other variables or whatever, yeah. and, and so it creates a unique name. And so the question is, yeah, so how do you, what happens if that, if, you know, so you have over, overlapping items, and you know, you, you can also go, um, if I go to page, edit that field, um, I think I can also, um, for the path settings, Sometimes, actually, no, you can't do that here. I was going to say you can maybe put a token in here for the user going in, but I, you know, I don't know. But I think it's, if, there's, if, it, if that is a true bug, I'm sure someone will make a fix for that, okay? But let's, let's go back to... If I upload a bunch of images, uh -huh. so okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. So watch this. The question was, what happens if you put a bunch in here? So let's stick a bunch in. All right, so the next picture we're going to put in is a picture of, well, let's see, so by not by having multiple items, I can, like, add, I can keep on adding stuff, you know? So let's browse, and hopefully all this configuration stuff that I just did um, will be hopefully replaced by some work that Jen Lampton's going to do uh, to automate all that stuff. So um, whatever, whatever. And uh, this is a vertical image, and we're going to send to text area. And then let's go put the cursor in for our next drop. So um, actually, let's stick her as image left. And then let's put in uh, another picture, let's say here. Um, Can you drag and drop to move that picture right now? Um, drop it in the center of the, the paragraph? Well, let's. Um, yeah, yeah, you, you, I think you can. Yeah, I think it looks like it did move it, but, but you know, I, I think it's easier if you. Um, um, well, I don't know. Let 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 me save it first. I'm also putting in a bunch of pictures of this step. So, so well, actually, let's just save for a second, then I'll add a bunch more. So, so yeah, your your request w was. Was done. You messed up my. You messed. You messed up my demo. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it works. <laughs> um, well, here, let me just go like that. Check it out. Uh, that's how I wanted it. All right. Okay, let's go get some more pictures here. Um, let's go get a bunch now. Um, browse. Uh, here's a good one. Yep. Do you have to enable full HTML to get this functionality for image insert since it's inserting um, you know, the full HTML of, of the image? Who's using the filter? Yeah. You are filtering HTML to the HTML system. Are you allowing the IMG tag? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just putting in a bunch of pictures. So uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, you, if you just replay this this screencast, it's going to show you all the stuff I just did. So I'm going to be sure to um, say inline horizontal, inline horizontal, and inline horizontal. Now let's see what happens. I think this click. I think the question is, what happens when you do a bunch? So let's let's go like this. And let's start sticking these in at random spots. So there's the first one. So in the text area, look at that. Uh, send to text area, look at that. Make this a little bit bigger. And uh, why not? Write them on the list, yeah. All right, send the text area. I'm going to hit save. This is what we get. And so that is the new cool nifty way of how to put inline images into the WYSIWYG interface without IMCE and without that old horrific mess of like 20 different pop-up windows you had to go through. Have you ever had to train a client on how to use that thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can actually... Um, 
Okay, so let me do, let me show you one more trick here, and then I'm going to hand it over. And so let me just address it. So let's go create content page, and uh, like this. And now watch this reference existing. And so now I have to remember what these names are called. Um, CL. Uh, check it out. Select. And uh, let's. Uh, this this is a different uh, you know image cache preset, so it's going to look slightly different than the other one, just to show you what you can do with this. Got it? Correct. Uh, image cache writes a copy of the image. Um, no, it doesn't. If you change upstream, <coughs> if you if you, okay, well, okay. So I think I think I think okay. Um, why don't I show you everything I know about image cache when the session's over? Because that's a whole other ball of coolness that. And have it trickle down. Now you need to go through and kill the items in cache for it to know how to do that. It's not that smart right now, but. Or just upload a new picture. Yeah? I know your feelings about external data, but, uh, <laughs> but if you already have on an FTP site, let's say, 50,000 uh -huh. pictures, uh -huh. can you reference one of those without it making 50,000 copies? You know, if you oh. don't use throughout <clears throat> image the cache, file. Image cache doesn't write the file until you call it. So, in other words, check this out. Um, in other words, can you have it? Use an image already in place on your site without ever making a copy. Um, can I use an image already on my site without making a copy? Yeah, but image cache won't render the the image subset until it's not there and called. Does that make sense? Am I is that communicating? So, so if I if I don't want to use image cache, will Tiny MC uh, embed an image that's already in an external silo on my site without making a copy of it? Oh, in this exercise, um, you, you could actually, um, I believe, reference the original image from external URL or for potentially something in your file system, I believe, maybe. Um, but the advantage of using image cache is, you know, it, it keeps the images looking good. So that you don't have a bunch of w random weird sizes. So if you notice here, um, if I go to edit, um, I could actually just insert the original, which is going to be gigantic. See? You know what I'm saying? So that's the original one, not processed through image cache. Okay. Nice, huh? <laughs> so uh, yeah, so that's the dealio. Um, yeah. Save the text or send it to the text area. Is that fairly <coughs> new? Oh yeah, this is like these are dev modules. This is all this stuff right, like. I've been using to build like a Google Fi site. And oh. Would have been perfect for my well. Yeah. No, you, you, you gotta, you gotta, you can't stop progress, man. You gotta, yeah. you gotta. <laughs> 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 okay, but um, I, I, um, I really wanted to to share up this time with um. I, that's fine. I mean, keep going. With okay, questions. all right. Okay. Yeah, it's about, about you guys. All right. Can, can you automate which image cache preset gets assigned to an image when it's uploaded when you have to let the user choose? Well, the reason is um, if I were to use the same preset for all images, horizontal and vertical images would look a little weird. Either, I mean, one would look great, the other one would look weird. Does that make sense? Because I, I told it. Because it does, I mean. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I mean, um, it's it's okay. You you could sort of autom automate it as as suggested here, but um, you have to put in a lot of extra weird stuff in here to. Make it do what you need. Sometimes you get these weird background colors, and um, 
I, you know, you could always experiment with this and add, you know, you can edit these things and just, you can add a gajillion little more moves to see if you can write some path to thread the needle to get things standardized with one setting, but... image cache that will send, say, every image that shows up when this node is shown as teaser or full will adhere to that namespace from image cache and thereby do whatever you set it or ask it to do with it. Um, so I, for example, have a, a site running that allows uh, the users to upload an image. Um, they don't know how to resize images, so it goes anywhere from tiny 500 uh, mm -hmm to several megabytes and obviously JPEG size. Uh, what it will do in that case, it will only display a 500 by 500, or in this case, I use the horizontal for most visual cameras in a certain format, um, some window. Mm -hmm. In the teaser, however, it actually crops first and then scales uh -huh. down to uh, 125 to 125 pixels. Uh -huh. uh, Okay, so so what we talked about here is uh, other forms of using the uh, file, you know image field, and um, this is okay. So for what it's worth, what I just demonstrated here is not the standard use of this field. <laughs> this is typically done for a whole other like operation. It's just that this approach replaces a big pain in the butt. If you use IMCE, you know you have to like it. You know you have to click insert picture. Cl click browse, then click upload if it's available, and then click something else, and then you click something else, and then you click something else, and, and then, then windows aren't easy to navigate. Yeah, and yeah. they look totally inconsistent. So, what we're doing here is we're using the um, image field or file upload. I mean, yeah, image field to uh, slip these into um, um, your inline images into your. WYSIWYG page. So, uh, yeah, question in the back? I'm interested in seeing your alternative to the HTML filter. Yeah, I could talk about that. Okay, you want to flip over and show um, me? Sure. Uh, you want to take the video? Um, let, me, let me just plug this in because I got the okay, so, uh, configuration. So, so you're going to, um, okay, so I'm going to unplug this thing. All right, let me just kill my, uh, yeah, here we go.